Welcome back to the channel, everybody. So we're going to go a little bit deep here today. I've been looking at a lot of information and certain things are beginning to line up. You're starting to see what I was telling you about. Uh, now, let me say this. You saw that the Fed couldn't. I, I, I like to say couldn't. They didn't cut interest rates. I've been telling you that they wouldn't cut interest rates, right? Now, what was my statements? What were my statements based off of? They were based off of what other members, lesser, less popular members than Jerome Powell of the Fed have been saying. They were telling people since last year, I think about October, November, a lot of other lesser known members of the Fed were saying they believed that interest rates would stay higher for, for longer, which obviously affects everything, everything. All right. It's, it affects those prices going up and down. Now, I also been covering other information that is going to be rearing its ugly head in the next year or two for the next decade, really. But we're really interested in next year or two. Right. What is that? Rising debt, which is insane that they it's right out there in everybody's face. But a lot of people are not paying attention to it. That rising debt is going to affect everything. Prices going up and down, how people live, it's going to affect everything. The deployment or non-deployment of the new financial system, if you believe in that. Um, banks, how many banks collapse, whether they can thrive or not. It's going to affect everything, and that's factual. All right, I try to bring you nothing but good information here. If you like this information, please click that like button. And also, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. I'm telling you, because I'm going to give you some good stuff here. Um, and there's no switching up here. We are who we are here, right? We took our position like Spartans. We're standing where we stand. Nothing's changed for the negative. It's only gotten better. But when you have this rapidly rising debt, right? And they remove the debt cap, the debt limit last year. That was part of their deal. So they've been spending record amounts of debt. Correct. So then when it comes time and they they will, you have to you have to pay off that debt. You have to start remedying that debt at some point. We'll get into why. But how do they do that? How do they even assure people that they're attempting to uh, remedy that that massive debt at some point in the future? One of the ways to do that is to keep interest rates higher for longer. So as soon as I saw them remove that debt cap, that debt limit, which is going to be hell for everybody that's in the United States in the future, I'm telling you, right? We'll get into that. Don't worry. But as soon as I saw them remove that, I said, uh oh, it's this is trouble. This is a problem. There's, there's no way they're cutting interest rates early. Now, I don't know what they have going on in Europe that allowed them to do that. I, I'm not, I don't know if they, they operate similar to United States, what debt they've been racking up. You have to ask some of my European counterparts, but in United States, no, it has to be higher for longer. They have to keep interest rates higher for longer because that debt is skyrocketing. And then another thing, I'm trying, I'm trying to remember everything. There's so much we're going to cover in this video. It's going to get deep. I'm telling you, because people better prepare. Now's the time to focus. Now is the time to really make sure all your ducks are in a line, uh, that you're protecting yourself as much as you can, protecting your capital as much as you can. I'm telling you. I mean, you can do what you want. This is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just saying you want to be smart. This is not the time to be confused. This is not the time to argue and fight with individuals. This is not the time to hand your mind over to other individuals and entities that are probably just using you. This is not the time for that. This is the time to stand solid, protect yourself at all times, in my humble opinion. So you have uh, int keep it interest rates higher for longer. What else does this extremely high amount of debt do? Oh, you don't like, oh, some people don't like taxes. Is that, are you sure about that? You don't like that? Are you sure? You don't like taxes. Okay, so have you seen what your government's doing with debt? That skyrocketing debt is going to mean at some point, right? At some point, those taxes have to go up. How do you think they handle this debt? They handle that debt with taking the money from the people. The people are the ones that get just, just abused all around, right? So those taxes have to go up at some point. That's going to be devastating for a lot of people, a lot of people. And while a lot of people are going to get lip service, they're not going to do anything about it. Right. But those who are wise can take action, preserving capital. Right. 
uh, not taking too wild of risks and things of that nature. Uh, you know, once again, that's just we're just that's just two light things too. This is two light things where this rising amount of debt is going to be the biggest threat the United States has ever seen ever. It can. I'm not saying it will. I'm saying that it can. This is logical. I'm, I'm telling you factual information here. This can be something that could devastate the United States. I think you're seeing the, the, the effects of it already. Already. You've been seeing it. And when you bring down the house, you think they're not going to build a new house. When you bring down a system, you think they don't have another system lined up. You think that everything happened is just by it's just a random, a, 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 a random instance. No, they're letting it happen. Listen, removing the debt cap, that was intentional. And they know the outcome. Devastation is the outcome, period, period. People are already having a massive hard time. Homelessness is at record highs. I keep telling people this. So this all goes back to the new financial system and why. Listen, whether they deploy or not, that's up to them. I don't have control over that. I just know they're looking for something to replace the old system that they are collapsing. They've had a hand in everything that's going on. It's not going to get better before it gets worse. It'll be darkest before dawn. This is what I'm saying, right? But those who prepare themselves, whichever way they choose to prepare themselves, there's a lot of different ways. They will be able to not only survive through this, thrive through it, through it. If they're wise, if not, then there's going to be a lot of suffering. This is simple as that. I'm keeping it real with you. All right. So now higher interest rates for longer. Higher and possibly raising taxes at some point to deal with the skyrocketing debt. Why do they have to even uh, like pretend to deal with the skyrocketing debt? They have to they have to at least at some point, at least pretend to deal with the skyrocketing debt because they don't want to lose faith from their investors, whether they're investors that fund them, like they, you know, how they borrow money to bonds and T bills, all this stuff. Whether they're United States based or foreign. Now, that's where the big problem comes in. We read a lot of articles last year that they were telling you. We've heard from multiple individuals from out of China, high ranking individuals in their financial system. Now, I'm going to assume that everyone has to think similar who are foreign investors and funding the United States. So you have China is a big holder of U.S. debt. Then I think is Japan still number one? I think Japan is also there. Japan has their own financial problems. And I, I really don't think about Japan, Japan too much because they're so deep with uh, who loves XRP there and some of the other bank coins. Stellar has a foothold in Japan also, although they're very quiet. No, we'll see what happens. No guarantees in anything, but things have only gotten better. They haven't gotten worse. Once again, I repeat that. So I, I really don't think of Japan too much, but Japan is one of the biggest holders of U.S. debt. And then uh, is India in there as well? They have to all think the same. Like why? If you can't at some point, if at some point you can't pay that interest, why would we why would we hold your debt? You get what I'm saying? See where I'm going? If they lose that. So they can't afford to lose those big holders of U.S. debt. They can. So they have to at some point in the future say, hey, listen, we're going to be dealing with this so that we always can um, honor our end of the deal. And how do they do that? Higher taxes, which means that's more burden on the American people who are already right now. I mean, according to reports that I'm reading, already highly overburdened. How does this not all end badly for the American people? This is what I'm saying, United States American people. How does it not end badly for them when they're already right now in a very, very harsh state? Don't worry, we're going to go deeper. I'm telling you, we're going deep today. All right, so. Now, I'm just going to read this little tidbit here. This first little piece says, Fed leaves rates interest rates unchanged. Of course, of course. So I'm just giving you like evidence now because some people may not know that this occurred. 
Fed leaves interest rates unchanged. That happened two days ago. The Federal Reserve left rates unchanged on Wednesday, delaying highly anticipated rate cuts. No, but why were they highly anticipated? If you were listening to the other members of the Fed, then why would you anticipate that? Right. When they said it'll probably most likely remain higher for longer. You've heard that a lot. Higher for longer. So there's a lot of manipulation going out on out there in the financial world, in crypto as well, in crypto as well. Right. Um, the truth is one thing. And then the people who have power lead you to believe, believe something else because it benefits them. Right. So it says here rate cuts that the central bank expects to make sometime this year. Um, here's something random. I'm just going to throw in. Just notice how when BlackRock got involved with everything, all of a sudden there's FUD all over the place for everything. BlackRock and Valkyrie, all these powers took over crypto with this Bitcoin ETF and buying up the miners and all that type of stuff. Their money is also going into advertisements. Their money is also floating behind the scenes. I can assure you, listen, just from what I experienced in the last bull run, if the small companies try to, uh, you know, get people to promote certain things and certain ideas behind the scenes, why wouldn't the big money companies do the same? You ask yourself that question. Then you look at the questionable behaviors of certain individuals flip flopping on certain things. Now they turn their back on certain things. I got to ask questions like, wait a minute. What's going on here? There is always the possibility money's floating behind the scenes, fudding people out, change, making people change their minds because people right now will do anything for big money. And for those companies, big money is nothing. So you have to always question who you're listening to. I don't care who it is. Question everything. I keep telling people that. Question everything. So I'm not one for advocating that people just hand their minds over to another individual because you better be careful. You better know what their intentions are, what their motivations are. You don't know why they're turning their back on something or why they're saying something that's on them. But ask yourself, did anything change really about whatever thing you're in? It could be commodities. It could be crypto, right? Because I think there's a lot of powers behind the scenes trying to drive prices down and they know you don't listen to regular media anymore. You don't listen to the news media anymore like that. Most people don't. So the traditional methods of manipulation will not work. So who are they going to go through? Everyone's favorite influencers. That's who they're going to go through. I mean, maybe I'm wrong. I could be completely wrong. You don't have to listen to me. I'm just putting my thoughts out there. I'm telling you, I look at things with a, with a, 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 a quizzical eye. I'm like a detective. I've always been that way my, my entire life is what I've been good at. And I've been good at. A, let me tell you something. I've always been at the top of my class. I'm telling you right now. Somewhere near the top. So I, I use that intelligence. I don't let it go to waste. And so I question everything. I'm just saying. So that was just a little random tidbit there. Let's move on here. So we did um, the interest rates. We did a higher for longer. We did the taxes. Right. And here's the here's a, another little bit of truth here. Here it is from this is from the Council Council on Foreign Relations, the U.S. National Debt Dilemma. This is the biggest black swan, the national debt. I'm telling you, that's what's crushing one of the things that's crushing the banks right now. Having to keep those higher interest rates for longer is the reason why commercial real estate is having all those problems and why commercial real estate could end up taking down hundreds of banks in the future, collapsing them, which is a fact, right? It says under this scenario. Investors could lose confidence in Washington's ability to right its fiscal ship and become unwilling to finance U.S. borrowing. You see that? This is what they fear. This is what I was talking about. Any any of their investors becoming unwilling to finance U.S. borrowing. U.S. is running around with a bad credit card right now. You saw them. They even downgraded the U.S.'s credit rating. Remember that? That's all going to come in play in the future. Now, that the, whatever this ending of this video is going to be, is going to be really good because I'm telling you now, everyone is going to be scrambling for legit ways to make money. And I promise you, they're not going to want to take too many chances with it. They're just going to want to make big money. Now, when I, when, I, when I talk about the majority of the people, I'm talking about the people who are who stand at the forefront, the forefront of the the great wealth transfer, which is who older people who've been holding on to their capital, who um who stand to uh, uh, come into the knowledge of tokenization, 
They didn't know about that before. They didn't care about that before, but they may learn now because the doorway has been opened by the Bitcoin ETFs. So now they're getting involved with the Bitcoin ETFs. They say, what is it? Uh, you know, I really don't know about Bitcoin. I've heard about it, but it seems now it's becoming legit. And so they start learning about it. And that takes them down the rabbit hole like it did all of us. And we, they start learning about tokenization. Well, guess what? Grandma silver tea, tea cup set, right? <laughs> that's worth a ton of money. This piece of artwork that's been in the family for so long that now was, could get handed down to generations. All of that, whether it's handed down or not, can now be tokenized. Even if they don't advertise it, it can be tokenized. They can keep that value in a private wallet or somewhere or a private vault. You know, these digital vaults now they have and which I personally would not trust, but what, but some to each his own until they want to move it and they can move that value that's tokenized just in case their grandchildren want to use it or their children, whoever's going to get this great wealth transfer and they can just transfer that value to that wallet. They know where the painting is. It's in the attic. It's in the vault. It's at the, you know, whatever place you have holding your stuff, whatever high class storage facility. They know where the physical aspect is. But here, I'm going to give this to you so you know the, uh, actu the uh, actual value of it. We had a professional come in and, and, and do the pricing on it. That stuff is going, to, is, is going to happen. It's going to happen. Now, so what's happening now that they're opening the floodgates is... They're making it easier for the great wealth transfer to occur. Do you, you pay attention? The pressure is on everyone. So now with the older generations, it's not so much the pressure on them because a lot of them are not going, let's say, for example, they're not, they're not going to sell their house. I, I wouldn't. <laughs> you locked in that nice mortgage at a low. What are you going to sell into something worse? So, they're, so that type of thing there, they're comfortable to a degree. It's their children and their grandchildren that everything that I've been talking about, higher for longer interest rates, higher taxes, right? That, and didn't they just like do something new with the tax brackets, right? Like something. And I don't think the people were happy about that, but you could correct me if I'm wrong. Like, and by all means do, because I'm always willing to learn. I'm not a know-it-all, but it's their, their children and their grandchildren that are under massive pressure. And so a lot of older generations, I'll say this, I feel this way. They are very responsible, right? And they say, okay, you know, I'm almost, I don't know how to phrase this, but I, I'm, I'm, how do I say this? If I were to go at some point in the near future, um, I want to be able to help my family and make things as smooth as possible with these assets that I hold making its way to them. So they're thinking a lot of them are thinking like that. You know how I know that? Because there's so many people that are well off, okay? Very well off. Their children left. I know because I saw it with my own eyes, folks. I saw it. I saw it. Their children left. Now, I don't know if they went to college or they got some job. I don't know. But I know when things got tough, Lots and lots and lots of those children came back home and now they're living with mommy and daddy again. And these are children of all different types of ages. I'm telling you, folks. So that's how I know the older generations are trying to do their best to look out for these younger generations. That is also tied to their wealth, to their assets. I get it. I understand it. So now that tokenization aspect, this is one of the reasons you hear. All the big companies talking about it because they're going to get the big chunk of it while, while retail is arguing, while retail is being manipulated by money behind the scenes because they're the new media. While retail is fighting their own people on purpose. The big money is keeping their eye on the prize, their eye on the ball. They know trillions are coming. And that's why they wait retail. That's another thing. They wait retail out. Retail is so... um try to say this while being disrespectful. They don't have a lot of willpower. Retail does not, does not have a lot of willpower. And yes, I know that people are under pressure as well. Everybody feels those pressures. We're just all different. Everybody feels those pressures. So they take advantage of that. Another thing, 
Re retail, and it's not a bad thing. A lot of retail is not ruthless. They're not ruthless. And they're very, very trusting. They're very, very trusting. They listen to somebody every single day. You got to be careful who you hand your mind to. The big money knows that. You think a few million dollars behind the scenes? Not even a few million. Probably a few million over years. But you think behind the scenes, like a, few, a, a couple hundred thousand dollars. Well, let's say we'll bring it down to that range. A couple hundred thousand dollars doesn't move some of the new media. When, like, so anyway. They know that I, they, they use that to their advantage. They keep their eye on the prize while they shake up all the retail down here. So, but circling back around, the older generations definitely will be the, the primary targets because remember, they're at the forefront of the great wealth transfer. They will be some of the primary targets for advertisements. And it will be, this is why also at the same time as you see, See uh, BlackRock taking over and all this other the other uh, companies like Valkyrie, etc. Them taking over crypto. You see the massive FUD campaign, not even from traditional media, but from regular influencers. You see that going on. Right. Then at the same time, you had Google uh, uh, clearing everything. So now you can run Bitcoin ads. Why do you think that is? That's all on purpose. It's a plan. But who is who are these advertisements? And that's just the beginning. This is the beginning. This is to soften up the minds. Those are, that's what those advertisements are going to be. Just to soften up the minds and get them used to the idea that, hey, Bitcoin's OK now. Crypto is OK now. Everything else will follow. But when those individuals with wealth go to their private banks. All right. They talk to their private uh, whatever those financial advisor type people are. I forgot what their title is. They're going to speak to them. They're going to speak to them about tokenization in the future. They're going to speak to them about Bitcoin investment because there's money behind the scenes that will push them to push it. And like I said, when this all happens, it's just my humble opinion. Once again, not financial advice. I don't think they're I think it's going to happen fast, meteorically. It's going to be a first come, first serve, all out bull run, bull rush. Whoever's in gets that gets the ton of capital, life changing gains. I, and, and I don't know uh, how long it will last. I'll say this. Just going by reality, the fire that burns brightest burns shortest. We all know that, right? The fire that burns brightest burns shortest. So sometimes when things happen meteorically, it's in a split second. It's in a short amount of time. Boom, 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 boom. Now, what they don't want is to drag this out and give retail too much time to make anything off of this. Retail is going to be scrambling because a lot of them are selling everything that they have for a variety of reasons, reasons I can respect. And some reasons are, are just like somebody told me that this is bad, so I'm selling it. Whatever the reason is, they'll be scrambling. Prices will be going up dramatically in a climate where I've seen hundreds of people say let's say for example say that quant is expensive at a hundred dollars can you imagine when everything else starts skyrocketing i think people are starting to consider things expensive they get to six seven dollars fifteen dollars like like chain link stuff like that i think that because the climate the uh not climate but like uh the economic environment is just so uh so tough for these people at least in the united states right now the bulk of the people, not everyone, because you might be doing great. But I mean, like the bulk of the people, the bulk of the people are, are 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 in a very, very troublesome situation. Now, also, excuse, <laughs> excuse my hair. I got these tufts that they always poke up no matter how much how much I brush or comb my hair. Just like, they always poof up. And right now I'm just in a, in a zone in life where I just don't I don't want to cut my hair right now. I just don't. I just want to let it grow for just a little while. Just a little while. I like to do things differently. I've been cutting my hair down low for so long. I just want to just let my hair grow, just grow for just a little bit. So that's what I'm doing. You know, I go with the flow of life. Like I got a good flow going in life. Like, you know, so <laughs> some people are like, that. Hey, alpha name. hey, listen, I hope that I'm providing you quality content. I hope that I'm giving you the sharpest uh, uh, thoughts from my mind, you know, uh, which shout out, by the way, shout out to the members only section for all of their requests and for making videos like this possible. All right. So now let's move on here. We have a lot more to cover, a lot more to cover. Okay. I hope you're all doing very well out there. If this will ever load. So this is from the CFR, CFR.org and it's titled the U S national debt dilemma. 
It says the U.S. national debt has soared to historic levels relative to the size of the U.S. economy. Many economists say that the rapidly mounting debt load could soon diminish U.S. economic growth. Let me ask you a question. There's a lot of have you heard about ghost job postings where they're making it look like there's more jobs and more growth than this that and then is actually happening. Uh, what a lot of businesses are in the business of, no pun intended, is making themselves look better than what they really are. So they'll leave up job postings to make it, make it look like they're still hiring, uh, which uh, leads one to believe that they're doing well. No, a lot of these jobs are not doing well. Small businesses, a lot of small businesses are hurting. This is why those who have held out and tried not to raise their prices now have to give in to compete with the, you know, to survive and to compete. They have to raise their prices. They have to make some kind of money. They are, they are hurting if business was booming like it, what, like it typically should be, which it is not because a lot of people do not have money. So they're, 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 they're going to the shop rights and stuff. And, you know, they're, they're buying things, um, uh, in certain ways where they don't have to go to the small and medium sized businesses anymore. They're going around them. You get what I'm saying? I don't know if I'm being eloquent about that. So that's been hurt because that's been hurting the businesses as well um, because the people just they just don't have the money to to go out there anymore. They're trying to be a little bit smarter since they the M2 money supply charts have shown that the checking uh, the checking accounts and the savings accounts are at all time lows, at least the savings accounts in particular. I remember I would assume the checking accounts are, are similar. So what this has led to a lot of small businesses closing one. Number two, the debt, the debt, of, the debt is crushing small businesses because it makes what happen? Higher interest rates and things like that make for a tighter lending environment. And who benefits the most from lending? Don't get me wrong. A lot of businesses benefit from lending, but mostly, mainly the small businesses to medium sized businesses, businesses benefit the most from borrowing a tighter borrowing environment makes it much more difficult for them. So there are some who have escaped and they've gone to other places other than the United States. Sure, that's an option. Others have closed. So and then. If you keep this in mind, right, we've seen countless businesses flee the United States. They're taking their jobs with them. How does that affect U U.S. economic growth? Right. So over time, if there's higher interest rates for longer, tighter borrowing environment, it's harder to start a business. Um, that's in addition to other things where they're giving you a headache with a small business or medium sized business as well. If you know, you know. But that will lead if, if you have businesses leaving you have businesses closing down, that will lead to less jobs, which then leads to what? More desperation, more desperate. If you check the 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 um the data from the regular people and what they have been saying, like their sentiment towards finding jobs, you're going to see complaint after complaint, like I did, of, sorry, I got a little air in my chest, of people saying that, They've applied to these are people that graduated college right now. I don't know the degree they, they have. I'm assuming some sort of technical technical degree. So some some sort of computer degree. Right. From what I've heard, um, they're applying to hundreds of jobs and they're not getting calls back. Jobs are giving them the runaround. There's a reason for that. A reason for that. Now, if you have those job applications out there, even though you're just you just have them out there to make your business look good, it doesn't mean that you can actually hire people, right? They're just there, but you still have to take uh, interviews. You still have to, uh, you know, uh, pretend, go through the 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 the, um, the steps of, of of behaving like you're hiring someone. So you, you so you may not take interviews, or you may have a three, four, five step interview process now where it used to be one. There's a reason for that. I've heard a lot of people question why that is, right? From the articles that I've been reading and videos that I've been watching. Now, the reason for that is they really don't want to hire you. They really can't. Uh, that's because of such, um, such a harsh environment where they have to look good, but at the same time, they're not doing well. Then in order to make a profit, right? I know this, we're talking about small and medium sized businesses, not these huge companies that are in rec, allegedly in record profit, which is questionable. I'm not talking about them. But 
to make more money. I mean, think about it logically from a small business, medium business standpoint as to what is actually going on. Don't worry. This all leads to desperation. This all leads to the new financial system. This all leads to them dominating crypto and the desperation driving people into crypto to make that big, fast money so that they can survive. They can buy a home. This all leads there. That's why I'm that's why I'm talking about this. Right. I know most people won't make it to this point, but let's say you have the night shift or something. Just throw me on. And start push play, right? Uh, uh, this is also available on Apple Music as a podcast. You can listen just audio, right? Um, heck, if you're in the day shift, listen to me as well. Keep coming back because I'm going to keep on giving you the real information, real serious stuff that that is based in fact. Um, but think about it this way: with, with a small business, would you rather have five employees that are doing almost nothing, right? They're, they're new hires. You have to train them as extra capital coming out of your pocket. Or you have these three employees that have been there for years and years and years. And they're willing. So because a lot of jobs have these type of people. They're willing to do the jobs of like two, three people. Right. And you give them a raise of a few cents here and there and stuff like that. They don't even complain. And, and, and yet you're able to keep more money as a business running it that way. Those three veterans versus bringing on five new people. Now you got eight people and five of them are barely wanting to work. You see. So there's a lot of that going on as well. Which, um, like I said, now let's get to this point here. So now we have to cover this. I, I probably won't. <laughs> it's funny because if I don't put chapters in, people will think this is just one video, a video about one long thing. Like it's all about XRP or XLM or something. It's not. It's tied to the entire new financial system. And I have all of these different things I'm talking about. Uh, but I want to get to this point here. My apologies. I have a lot of different thoughts. This article here is from. The International Monetary Fund, it says rising interest rates are a risk for banks, even though many benefit from collecting higher interest rates from borrowers while keeping deposit rates low. Loan losses may also increase as both loan losses, just like the commercial real estate loan losses, right? So. Loan losses may also increase as both custom, uh, consumers and businesses now face higher borrowing costs. That's what I was trying to convey earlier. It says, especially if they lose jobs or business revenues. Now, keep your mind, your, your uh, mind, keep in mind that lose jobs aspect into the future. We have been seeing massive layoffs here and there. Now, there's a lot of people who say, and they tell me this all the time, over and over and over again. They keep saying this. They they uh, they don't believe that any black swan is even possible. That's number one. That's just mind blowing to me. I always consider a possibility. Uh, and then also, there's something else they say. They don't believe in a black swan event. Oh yeah, and they they believe that the United States is invincible. It will never go down. And I and I always say it's not about outside forces. A lot of people's minds they automatically go to BRICS nation. That's the first thing that people throw out at me. BRICS nations is not you can't do anything in the United States. What about the United States itself? What about it destroying itself? What about people within the United States that are in a position of power but they make more money outside the United States? What about that? Hmm? What about that? What about the United States? Uh, like, so, I mean, so I'm showing that there, there, this is happening now. It's not even about there being this black swan that just pops up out of nowhere, just boom. Like, no, it's this is happening now. It's just building, literally, it's building slowly. Like, you always have two opposite ends of a stick, right? This is all throughout life. So I, I, I just, I always keep this in mind. Hot and cold are on the same thermometer. Where does hot begin and cold end? Where does begin? Where does cold end and hot begin? At some point, they just phase into each other. So there's always these extremes up, down, left, right. My right hand, my left hand attached to the same body, right? So the same thing is with black swans. There is the black swan that boom does come. It's seemingly, seemingly, even though it didn't come out of nowhere, there was a buildup there as well. Most people didn't see it and it appeared to them to come out of nowhere. That's like the banks collapsing last year, even though if people looked, it was like a month before you saw that massive sell off go on. And then at, as the month pro proceeded, then the regular people began to sell big money. People sold first then the, then the regular people sold. And then you had the bank run occur and then you had the banks go down. Correct. All right. So. 
So you have that style, but then you have a slower build one that you can see coming is building up like a rumbling volcano. You get, I mean, it's giving you all the signs and then the volcano goes off. That's like what I'm seeing here. It's happening. The debt is skyrocketing. There's massive amounts of job losses already. So let's go here. So this is from Econofact.org and it's, it's titled Addressing Rising U.S. Debt. It says, first, increased borrowing by the government crowds out borrowing by households and businesses. This competition for funds drives up interest rates. What does it say? Wait, wait, wait. Let's read that again. This competition for funds drives up interest rates, making it more expensive for individuals and businesses to borrow. You see? So let's go on here as well. So now this article here is from the Peter G. Peterson Foundation and it's titled The Fiscal and Economic Impact of National Debt. Growing debt also directly affects the economic opportunities available to every American. So as the debt grows, these opportunities diminish, which you have seen, which we've even seen reports about how the rising debt will affect things like Social Security. You know, like look that up. Like, <laughs> I mean, I'm, tell I'm trying to give the people everything I got. You know, they I just I don't know. It says if high levels of debt crowd out private investments in capital goods, Workers, oh, now we're getting to another important part of the video. I hope a lot of people made it to th this far. Workers will have less to use at their jobs, which would translate to lower productivity. Of course, who wants to work for nothing? You're saying, Mick, they didn't say they're going to work for nothing. Wait, let me keep reading. Which would translate to lower productivity and therefore lower wages. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Excuse me, my nose hairs, I'm getting a little older, is just poking the heck out of me. I'm, this is just a real talk moment. I'm going to go clip some of my nose hairs after this. Oh, Alpha Neem, how could you talk about clipping nose hairs? We're grown here, aren't we? We're, we're adults. I'm not saying anything too disgusting. We're just being real. So people don't think Alpha Neem's wiping his nose. Like, you know, my nose hairs are poking the heck out of me right now. I meant to cut them earlier, but um, I have so much going on right now, folks. You know, you got to put some things to the side sometimes. Nose hairs are one of them. Anyway, so... Lower wages. Haven't we heard that wage growth has been slowing down? And by the way, wage growth hasn't been keeping up with inflation anyway. Everything's sky high while people's wages have just come to a crawl. You know, so just imagine that the debt is continuing to go up. And in addition to wage growth slowing, uh, allegedly, this is what they say. This is what the articles I read over 2023 said. All right. If you read something different, that's it is what it is. All right. And if I read something that updates that and says that wage growth took off, then I will go by that if that's the accurate information. OK, uh, so imagine in addition to that, the debt just keeps going up, which, by the way, like I said, they remove the debt limit. So they're spending record debt every month. That's going to lower wages. Do the people know that this is happening? Do the people know that that growing debt every single month, that record amount of debt is, a, is contributing to lower wages? Do they know any of this? That it contributes to higher taxes, lower wages, because their government men is doing it and they're not making it a secret. You see what I'm saying? It's, it is a black swan right now, right now. Now, let me close this out. I have two more articles. Actually, I could keep cooking. I, I, there's two more articles. Now we get to this point right here. This is the golden point. I believe, and I could be completely wrong. I believe that they want to um, funnel all of these people that will be desperate for money. I think they want them to funnel all that money into the top cryptos at some point in the future. And I think right now, this is what, uh, this is the reason for all of the FUD. Just like they FUDed Bitcoin for years, while all the while they were collecting Bitcoin, they were setting themselves up to dominate Bitcoin. Now you see the same thing happening with XRP, with Solana, with um, Chainlink. I've seen FUD everywhere, folks. I've never seen anything like this. Throughout my, my what, what, two and a half years I've been here now, I think about two and a half. Don't look at the channel date because that's when I started the actual like YouTube um, 
like the, the I started the channel, but I didn't put out any videos. You get what I'm saying? But as far as putting out my first video, I've only been here for like two and a half years. I think so. It was a uh, 2021 beginning of 2021 bull run. I first released my first video, right? Just a little bit before the bull run. But anyway, so I think I've never seen anything like this before in my life. I think that I'm seeing FUD for quant. I'm seeing FUD for XRP. I'm seeing massive FUD for Solana. See, some people are only in one community. I'm in a lot of them because I'm well diversified. So I, I try to keep up with everything. I'm seeing ma massive FUD for everything at the same time like I've never seen before. I even saw in the last like month and a half, massive FUD for Bitcoin at certain points. It's just as hard to float that idea now that you see all of this stuff going on with the ETFs, but still there's FUD there. Um, massive FUD for Ethereum. Why? For mo mainly the top legit cryptos, but no FUD for meme coins, no FUD for these scams out here, these scam coins. You got to ask. I have to ask myself some questions like, wait a minute. No, something doesn't seem right here. And I trust myself. I trust myself. I trust my intuition. No, this is the same thing they did to Bitcoin. They are driving those prices down so they could get in for cheap. Methods be damned. I don't know how <laughs> what their methods are, or, you know, uh, 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 how that translates. Because some people be like, well, if they're buying low, how come the prices don't go up? They've been stagnating, though, haven't they? People have been selling in mass. Why isn't there even an even more massive plunge? There should be theoretically, if everybody's selling as much as I, uh, they've been telling me, then there should theoretically be a much more massive plunge plunge in price for a lot of these things, but this is a minimal plunge from what I've seen. I mean, you might feel different. Maybe it's just perception or perspective, but it hasn't been a massive plunge in my humble opinion. Why? That can only be possible if someone's selling at the same time as someone's buying, but they're buying in a way where they don't really, uh, they, they really don't alert everyone that they're buying. They're just buying just enough, just enough, right? Little by little. They're very, like I said, some people can say that they're these higher ups are evil, but they're not dumb. They're not dumb. So I think that in the end, and we'll probably have to come back because I have so much more I want to say to everybody. I really I have, I have a lot of other articles here lined up and I have so much more to cover. I think that they're pushing people to a to the edge of desperation. And they want that great wealth transfer that all the top minds have been talking about for the last two years. They want it to come to them primarily. They're fudding people out at the same time, breaking them psychologically and putting the pressure on them. And only a few retail holders who are wise and strong. Once again, not financial advice. I'm not telling you what to do, but a few is my just my humble opinion. A few humble retail uh, investors who held strong and who know what they have. And keep in mind, like I said, I'm well diversified. I have XRP. I have XLM. I have Quant. I have um, LCX, which was do doing pretty good. LCX, I think it went down a little bit the last day or two. I have LCX. I have Algorand. I'm well diversified. That's just a little bit. I have gold, platinum. That's just a little bit. So I think a, f a few people who hold certain things, right? And, and there's a lot of good things that are outside of what I just listed as well. There's a few good projects. I won't say a lot. There's a few good projects, solid projects that are outside of that. Um, I think that only a few people are going to be the new 1%. That's it. Everybody else will be on the outside. Um, if they do jump in to make gains, I think that it won't be as much as the people that are the new 1%. I don't. I think that they're getting conditioned right now to, to doubt. They are listening to people that sow doubt within their minds. You're getting conditioned to doubt. You're getting conditioned to jump one place to the next. You're getting conditioned, not you, but the, the proverbial you, like the people out there, are getting conditioned to jump from one thing to the next, to betray their own beliefs. Um, I think they're getting conditioned to that, and that's going to really, really backfire on them in the long run. Um, I'm not sure. At once this next bull run takes off, I don't think you're going to see these lows again. This is my personal opinion. I just don't. I don't. I look at how every single time there's a major, major catalyst and the people leap in. Uh, and it's, I really shouldn't say the people. I feel like it's the institutions, really. And then the prices skyrocket so fast. If it is the people, it's, out of de it's because of desperation. They need the money so badly. But at the same time, no matter what's the reason for the skyrocketing of those prices, when a big catalyst comes in, it means that those who have bought at an extremely low area, and that's another thing people don't get. A lot of people bought at, at extremely low areas, low areas. 
and uh, and on top of that, some people only have like a few coins, but they project on everybody else like they only have a few coins. That's not right. That's not right. Some people have so many of one coin, let's say, you know, probably a few of them, but let's just say, say one coin. They have so many, a ton of them to the point where this thing goes up a few cents. They're looking good. You know, it goes up 50 cents. They're looking good. You get what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm talking about. When you're a whale in something, it's like, it just goes up a little bit and you're seeing massive gains. So I think a lot of those types of people are the ones who, uh, uh, who will be there when it pops off. They believe they have a motivation behind them. Um, but it doesn't matter if people are retail is there. It doesn't matter if I'm there. It doesn't matter if you're there. I think this is going to happen. Nothing stops it. The, the mainstream institutions, they have the time, they have the patience, they'll be there. And I think they've set it up perfectly. The people, um, the people continue to get played against each other. And I, so anyway, this is going to happen in my humble opinion, it's all there. And I think this, this, this is the pressure to squeeze the, the toothpaste out of the, out of the tube in the direction you wanted to go in for lack of a better word. Um, and they are going to squeeze the people's, uh, money into these particular things that can skyrocket like nothing else. Now the legacy system has the perfect, or they're building the perfect uh, money-making instrument, and it was handed right to them by retail. So um, I, like I said, we'll come back for another video, okay? Appreciate you all being here. Um, and so until next time, let's get to the money.